desk jobs again and we're doing some stuff with it all so uh, I come across something in my shed today an Xbox controller I call these Xbox ones until the Xbox one came out these are the original Xbox controllers the first one I used to work for a game I used to work for a company called game traders and uh, we used to read and sell secondhand stuff as a result I collected quite a number of Xboxes and I used uh, a little exploit uh, to load custom firmware on them and was using them as media boxes for quite a while but uh, chances that I'm going to uh, ever use this controller again uh, for a media center are pretty much nil now this is definitely one I had from my game trader days because there's a lot of cable on here and there's even an extender um, so we're gonna go all the way up to the end now there is this little adapter here as well that would go into the Xbox now fun fact with these these are basically an off-the-shelf USB controller so you can just put a standard USB plug on these uh, such as this one and with the right firmware you can use them on a PC basically the original Xboxes were more or less off-the-shelf hardware with a few modifications and uh, there was a lot of things you could do they used standard IDE drives so for instance when uh, once it had booted up and the uh, IDE drive had been unlocked from the chip on board you could do a hot swap within a few seconds to another drive and then feed it some firmware and uh, yeah from then on you could do whatever you wanted with it but uh, yeah it was uh, kind of handy in that you could replace standard parts with them in any case uh, today we're going to take this little adapter off we're going to convert it into a USB one and we're going to hear a bunch of people cry out in pain I could do worse but uh, yeah we're going to have some fun with this now there's a couple of different ways we could go about this I could simply cut this cable cut this cable join them together and put a bit of heat shrink over it which is probably the way I'm going to go to be honest or I could cut this shell off and I could wire this directly on and I could heat shrink this and make it look really good I don't think I've got the energy for that today this is just a uh, simple little desk job so I'm going to make an adapter for this I'm going to leave this largely intact and uh, so yeah if anybody ever wants to use it again for an Xbox they just got to find themselves another one of these not the end of the world um, the other thing we used to do is put a USB socket on the end of this so we could plug a USB memory stick in to an Xbox directly as well and sometimes a USB hub or a keyboard and mouse all of those things worked so uh, yeah anyway I think I'm gonna go snippy snip and join these two all right now before I go snippy snip I want to make sure I've got suitable size heat shrink tubing this looks about the right size for both cables I think that'll be good so I've got a piece of that all right this is where I make everybody cringe and this is where I put the uh, you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use this as a thumbnail and I'm gonna upset literally everybody but uh, I'll go about here so I've got a little bit of slack you know what I don't actually have an Xbox I got rid of like 50 of the things um, and all the associated bits and pieces years ago I'll give it a bit of a squeeze here and we'll peel the shielding back that acts as a ground and the foil protection we're gonna peel all that back you'll notice the color scheme here is familiar if you've ever done a USB lead you'll recognize these colors the red and the black for positive then we've got data plus data minus and a bunch of other things in here I think this is a video feed but in either case you'll recognize data plus data minus negative and positive pretty sure if we cut this we're gonna have the same colors and there's a reason for that all right let's uh, trim this one okay I'm gonna do the same little squeezy squeeze here but before we do that I'm going to trim a bit of hot shrink and or heat hot shrink over that one and uh, not quite through a bit more of a squeeze there we go similar kind of deal with the shielding and the foil layer it's very familiar looking isn't it and we're going to uh, undo the foil layer lo and behold we've got some familiar looking colors in there more or less you match the colors I'm going to confirm online first but off memory from something I did like over 20 years ago now and yes it's been 20 years guys I know I make you feel old I feel it too 
But anyway, I'm going to go just double check that I can match these colours. But I'm pretty sure we just join the colours. Yep, it pretty much is that simple. Turn the soldering station on here. Some flux core, 6040 tin lead solder. The dangerous stuff. And uh, hopefully with that extender we don't get too much voltage drop to the controller. But I guess we can always unplug the extender. Let's see if it works. So I'm going to uh, strip and prepare all of these and we'll be back. Now I can hear you over in the back row there. Going, why didn't you just go to JCAR and get yourself a USB connector? I could have, but I'm temporarily without a license, and I live rural, so there's problems with that idea. And I have a metric crap ton of stuff that's going to the skip bin soon, or e-waste, so I thought I'd make use of one of them cables. Now, um, because if this doesn't work, this is where that control is going as well. I probably need some fan exhaust ventilation over here. Turn our outlet fan on. And uh, we're going to match all our colours up here. And yes, I'm taking the cheats way out and just twisting these together and soldering them. Because this is a job for me and not for everybody else in the public. And it may not work for various reasons. The working status of this controller is unknown. It's been sitting in storage for more than a decade. So uh, it's best that we don't take too much cost or too much uh, effort in uh, trying this out. Some tiny stuff here. I'll do a couple of short little bits here. And basically what I'm going to do is put it over the top, heat it, and then squeeze it with a pair of pliers. Gas torch. Do this one at a time because it's too hard to uh, do them all at once and get the timing right. Alright, now we just need to find an elegant way to uh, fold these so that they fit in. The yellow wire can go that way. These guys can probably... this is going to be difficult. I've done that strain relief ironically a little bit too short, so we'll have to find a way to get these in the heat shrink. We will be back. So I ended up just chopping the shields apart because they don't strictly need to be joined. It may result in a bit of a noisier signal, but uh, this is pretty much a uh, bodge job anyway. If it works, it works. And if it works well, it might be worth opening it up and putting a patch wire between those two. There's our join there. It's going to look a bit lumpy once it shrinks. But hopefully that provides enough strain relief. There we go. Let's see if we kill anything. We're going to go into our powered USB hub. We'll turn our volume up and see if we hear it go in. Aha! Uh -huh. It's detected a device. And it says we're setting up a generic USB hub. So we'll work on the drivers. Now, the reason this will come up as a USB hub is because of these ports where the memory cards go in. They were basically USB flash drives that uh, were just with a proprietary connector on them. So this is actually a four port USB hub with one port spare, the controller on the other, and um, I think the vibrate controller was a separate device. That might make four. But anyway, that was one port, another port, the controller, and uh, but we need drivers because if we look at the device manager up here, we're showing up as an unknown device. Now, most of the information I'm coming up with is coming from XBCD. This is stuff that tells me stuff I already pretty well knew, but this is a pretty well arranged um, information source that will tell you all about this. I will put the link below. All right, you might hear my apprentice in the background because it's game time, it's that time of night. Now I had to disable driver signature enforcement and I ran the install and I had to manually tell it where the drivers were. All of that stuff is explained on that page. Part of the install process, of course, it's restart. I'm still trying to figure out how to get the drivers to work. Um, but there is a full description at that link, like I said. Alright. That looks a little better. I will do the cable later. And do all the rest of this, too. Alright. I had to disable Windows driver signature enforcement to install the drivers, but I got it working. And uh, we're looking good. Let's go try it out. 
And here it is under the human interface devices as an XPCD Xbox controller. I wonder what we can do with it. Yeah, I've gone into the uh, Windows contr uh, joystick control properties. Let's see. We can see stuff moving around, all of these things. We've got some of these buttons here. All these different buttons are registering just fine. Okay, we have a working controller. Okay, we have joystick look at least working in Half-Life. So uh, that's not too bad. Um, none of the other buttons work yet. I haven't mapped those ones yet. We'll figure that out, but uh, under the Windows uh, joystick controller, all of the buttons are registering. So it works. And uh, I'll work the rest out later. This is going to go on the Apprentice's computer, so I'm going to do more on that. But this was just meant to be a quickie on how you can convert your old Xbox controller for a PC controller. Anyway, let's move on. I hope it was interesting. And I have more desk stuff to do for the next week or two until I get my license back. Anyway, we'll see you then.